Hello everyone, this is Alejandro and in this tutorial we will see how we can use the new conditional logic to create different type of effects that can depend on logic. This is a new feature on the spline that enables you to trigger different actions based on different conditions and it's going to enable you to add more complex interactivity into your scene. In this tutorial we will see how we can create this scene in which a sphere enters an area and triggers the rotation and the scale change of another object. All right, let's begin. All right, so I have a very simple scene in here. Here is a cube and there is also a sphere. And my goal is that I want the sphere to move around using the game controls. And then when the sphere enters in this area in here, I want it to trigger a transition on this cube to make it bigger. So I already have the tapes for this cube, so the base step and this other step, and it's basically just making the cube bigger in this step, and it's also rotated 180 degrees in the Y axis. If we want to see how this looks right now, I just create here like a start event and then a transition. So if I go to play mode, you can see this is what is going to happen. But obviously we don't want this to happen in the start event, so let's remove that for now. So the first thing that I want to do is to create a game controls event. So I'm just going to create a new event for the sphere. And then I'm going to change that event to be a game controls event. I also want to make sure that the camera is following, in this case the personal camera. And also let's put it back in normal and then no rotation left and right because we don't need that. So if we go to the play mode right now, you can see that when I move my sphere using the WASD keys, it's basically moving around. But the cube is not reacting, right? So we want the cube to react when it's closer to this area. So in order to do that, I'm going to select my cube again, just switch back to the base state. And then I'm going to create a new event and this event is going to be a conditional logic event. So the way the conditional logic event works is that we have three areas in here which is if, then and elf. So the if is a condition and here basically you are asking okay if the distance of this queue to this other object which could be the sphere is 200 units or in this particular case it could be a different number then you're going to trigger an action right. So let's do that. This object here, this circle has uh, 512 units X and Y, which means that we want to calculate the radius of this, which is half, and this should be 256, which is the half. All right, so let's use that number in here. So let's go back to conditional logic and let's use 256. And then what we want here is to define what's gonna be the action, right? And the action is just going to be a transition and we want this transition to go from the current state which is the base state to the state number one and then the transition here the interpolation will be a sprint which is going to be a little bouncy so now if we go to the play mode and we enter in this area you can see that it is triggering the transition so instead of staying in that state we want the queue to return to the initial state when the sphere is no longer inside the area all right, so let's Etsy the play mode here and now let's see how we can do that. All right, so we have the if condition and then we are triggering this action. Else we can trigger another transition here and then this transition is going to be the reverse. So instead of going from the current, it's going to be from the state and then it's going to be to the base state. And then this is going to be a sprint transition as well. So now if we go to the play mode and then we move the sphere, then we move out and you can see that the cube is returning to the base state. So we finally achieved what we were looking for. Now if we make this uh, area bigger, let's say this is now something closer like almost 800. So that means that in the comparison here, we want to make sure that this is a half of that, which is 400. So if we go to the play mode, we're already inside the area but if we move outside, you can see that the logic is working fine. So let's just go back to the previous size. All right, so now that the transition is working and is reacting to the distance of the sphere, I want to show you that you can also trigger a different type of action like the sound. So I can create a new action and then I can switch to sound. And here I'm just going to click on the little library and I'm just going to find for the success sound and just gonna click it there and I think that's enough so if I go to the play mode now and then I enter in the song 
you can see that every time that I enter it's going to trigger this sound alright so now that we know how to trigger actions based on the distance let's see what else we can do so I want to create a new cube in here so it's gonna be a smaller cube something like this we run corners as well and for the material I also want a blue but I want to detach from the material and I also want to create another state for this object and in this other state instead of blue it's gonna be more like green so I want this little cube to become green once this bigger cube changes fully to this other state. So once this cube becomes like this, I want this little one in here to change to the green color. So let's see how we can do that, right? I'm just going to create another conditional logic event, but in the one that is smaller. And instead of distance, I want to check for a state change and it's going to be the state of the cube here which is this one and then i want to check like when this object changes to this state then i want to trigger something right and in this case the transition that i want to trigger is going to be in this new cube which is cube number two and it's going to go from current to state and for this particular event i want uh, a linear transition and perhaps something like 0.4 seconds and I also want the, the reverse so instead of going from current it's going to be go from the state to the base state also linear 0.4 if we go to the play mode right now we see that when we get inside we have all of this process and then the cube in the one that is smaller it changes to green and if we get outside it gets back to the other color. So this is how you can use the state change condition to change the state of another object based on a state change in a different object. All right, I hope you like this tutorial and you can start testing your ideas with the conditional logic and create more complex interactions on your scene. See you in the next one. Bye bye.